Um, so right there, Keith has got that started. Um, we will also um, make sure that you understand if, if you can turn on your audio, ask questions, or use the chat feature. Again, Rebecca monitors that throughout the session. So you'll see chat information come up throughout. So feel free to add your comments, type in a question, whatever you would like to do, whatever you're most comfortable with. Um, please free, feel free to do that. Um, we are going to be discussing today the Cordal Basics. Um, both of you, I know, have had some experience with it. So uh, please make sure that you ask any questions because this is really the format and the platform to do that. So feel free to ask those types of questions as we go along. So our agenda for today, in addition to the portal knowledge, uh, we're going to also just talk a little bit, and I hope you'll share, you know, what are some things you're doing around your communication plan in order to really allow um, folks to get set up and, inter and introduce Quillo, uh, as well as what are some of the videos, ideas that you have, what are you planning, um, and how are you engaging leaders in the organization? Um, it's about that ongoing engagement from the start as well as continuing to do that. So anything we can do to share tips, um, best practices, things that are successful for what you're doing, please feel free to share that information. Uh, we'll, of course, talk a little about some of the key resources we have available, as well as our next call, which we're excited to introduce again speakers for everybody. So as we um, look across the nation, here's where we do have individuals across the 12 states um, here joining us from the Quillo Nation. So uh, again, we're excited to have each and every one of them as a part of our um, group. So we'll continue to uh, work with each of them on their individual basis as they continue to implement Quillo in their organizations. So to get us started here, uh, we're gonna talk about the Portal IQ and really just kind of check your knowledge, you know, help you make sure that we'll do a little bit deeper dive into the portal, make sure you have the knowledge and information you need in order to make Quillo a great communication platform that really helps your organization continue to create a culture that shows that they value the direct support professionals in the organization and that you are concerned about their well-being. Um, it really is a way to stay connected with the users. So as a customer administrator or content manager for your organization, you are very likely on the app, you're watching the video, we appreciate that. I think that's a great way to continue to just think about the type of ideas, the things that you can do. You know, we have uh, no problem if you want to go ahead and take maybe one of the ideas that we've used to create a video, the key theme around it, and then really apply it to what you want to create for your organization. That's absolutely fine. Um, but the other key role that you hold is certainly um, the, the knowledge and the expertise of running the behind the scenes uh, portal. Um, I kind of refer to it as really the brains of the app because um, you're the ones that are controlling, you know, again, if you're gonna be creating videos, setting those up, putting them in, in your library, um, you control the users. Uh, so you're, you really do have a key role in making sure that things are going well for the organization. Um, so what we want to do is kind of deep dive into the portal. Um, I, I actually man the customer support area. So I hear on a, a more regular basis probably some of the frequently asked questions. And so what we did in order to work through this particular um, session was really take, you know, what are the questions that get asked? And so now we're going to just kind of test your knowledge. And we're going to use those questions to say, hey, where do you find? So we're going to walk through then each of the answers, and that will hopefully get you very familiar with, again, a little bit deeper dive into the portal. So this is really about making you proficient at what you need to be able to do on the portal every day. So let's start out with, again, um, getting yourself logged in. Of course, this is the login page, and everybody has a username, which is an email address and a um, password that you've created. Um, Again, the only individuals that can log in to the portal are customer administrators and content managers. So if you want someone in your organization to be able to see the information in the portal, 
you do have to designate them as one of those two roles. So as you log in then into the portal, um, my first question is, and again, if you wanna have fun, feel free to type it into the message to the chat feature, is where would you go to upload the organization's logo? If you look at the menu items here on the left-hand side, dashboard, users, consumers, videos, daily focus and study, if you're gonna upload your logo, which I think um, your organizations may have already done that, where did you go to do that? In which of those particular features? Anybody wanna take a guess at that? Type it in. Settings, very good, that's exactly where you would go. So again, Keith has gotta click on the settings mode here. Um, that's where you upload the logo. Um, and the other feature that is here is the, um, the billings information. So on a monthly basis as subscribers, this is where I go out, I get the information, and then I create the invoices. Um, so that's really what's in the settings feature. So if you have not yet done that, um, that's something that you certainly want to do, um, is get your logo put up. So you can see that the logo that we have here is called the Quillo Explorer. And what we did is we created this particular one as part of our test site to be able to demonstrate and show the information that we want to show on a more regular basis. So this is our Quillo Explorer um, community that we're going to be demoing today. All right, so that's really the study. So my next question, are you ready? How many users can I upload? Again, if you'd like to share your thoughts or ideas in the chat feature, feel free to do that. How many, how many users can you upload? A lot. A lot, yep, absolutely, that's exactly right. You can upload as many users as you want. There's really no limitation. And um, what you do is you use the user menu item to upload them. And there's two ways you can do it. You can do it individually. If, again, you have a new hire that comes on, just select the new hire, the new user button, the green one, and you can individually input their information. Um, just make sure that you always select the add user feature. Um, so again, you also have to select the role. So if you did want to change somebody and they're already a user on uh, the app, you can also um, edit their profile there too. So how do I know if someone is logged in? How do I know if someone has actually logged in to the app? This is a very simple one because if you look at the column, there is one that indicates the last logon. That's how you would figure out. Now, in this particular scenario, you can see in that column that everyone has logged on and you see the date that they actually logged into the app. Um, and then if they use it on a daily basis, they, that could trigger. So if I use it today, 6-6, six, six, um, then that indicates that I've um, used the app. So, so we had a question on that. Say that again. Sorry to interrupt. We had a, a question that just came in about the login, um, asking if you can prompt users who have not logged on through the user group, or do you just need to send them emails to join? Yeah. Um, we do not have a feature right now that allows you to prompt them. That is something that we have um, identified to want to incorporate. Um, so right now, what you would have to do is actually send them an email to join. Okay, great. Keep the questions coming. And thanks, Rebecca. Keep, keep me honest here, too. Um, great, okay. So the last logged in. If someone has not logged in, it will indicate never logged in um, under that last login area. So you can actually go out to that user tab, and you can see very specifically who's logged in, who is not logged in and then work individually with those that have not logged in. Now, say someone has left the organization, what do you do as a customer administrator? Someone has left the organization.
make them inactive, absolutely. And to do that, you would go over to the action little icon pencil. You click on that and their information comes up. You hit the little where it says act, account status. You just simply slide that over, make it inactive. And then you can actually select a reason that that individual has left the organization. So there's, you know, some individuals get terminated, perhaps they resign, some individuals decline to use the app, um, and then sometimes there's just other reasons that someone may have retired. So you can certainly put in another reason. So you'd make them inactive. So that is how you would, um, again, control the users as to who was whose status is doing what. Now, one of the things that I would highly recommend is that if someone comes back to the organization and decides to return, what are the things that you would have to do? You would have to, A, take a look and make sure that they haven't been a previous user. So you wanna go into your deactivated group and you wanna take a look at who's been deactivated. In this particular group, our Pillow Explore group, we haven't deactivated anybody. So if that um, user, again, in your particular group is not present, then you would set them up as a new user. If they are deactivated, then you can go back in and change the account status back to activate. The thing you would have to do though, is once you activate them, that does not automatically generate a new email to them to get set up. You would have to reset their password and I will show you how to do that. So that's how you take a person that's been deactivated and get them reactivated. The thing that you also wanna do though, is make sure that they haven't changed their email address. If they're using a personal email, one of the questions you wanna ask them is you know has there been any changes to your email? So um, because the email address is the um, activator for the account, um, you do have to make sure that that's accurate. We cannot have um, a user have the same email um, because that will not uh, allow the uh, person to be uploaded. So. So that is general information about the users. Again, as a customer administrator, you become pretty familiar with this particular area. You're activating, deactivating people. Um, I'm just gonna open it up before we move on. Is there, are there any specific questions about activating or deactivating users, getting people on board? Any questions anybody has? Okay, I don't see anything in the chat. And uh, nope, great. Okay. All right, so we've had a couple other people join us. Um, to those that have joined us, welcome. We're glad you're with us. Uh, again, as we walk through this, if you have any questions, um, either unmute yourself and ask the question or simply type it into the chat feature. If you go down to the bottom of your screen, you'll see the little chat icon. Click on that and it will allow you to type in a question or answer the questions that we're asking today. Okay, so we're going to move on then to another uh, one of our menus, which is the, um, the video. So to cover this, I'm gonna actually turn it over to my colleague, Rebecca. Rebecca, do you wanna awesome. handle it from here? Thank you, Sue. I feel like we're on, um, you know, that that on Jeopardy with uh, that contestant that was on for like a hundred days or whatever. So, um, yeah, yeah. I, I heard he, I heard he just lost too. I, he did. He did. Spoiler alert. Yeah. So, yeah, we don't have any daily doubles, but we do have the daily focus. So we'll we'll get there. So, <laughs> bad jokes brought to you by. <laughs> content here. Um, anyway, um, when it comes to the videos, we've seen some great, great videos up from our customers. So well done and keep it going. Um, as you're still getting used to the, the portal, our next question is about um, uploading your content. Um, where do you go to upload the creative video that your organization has produced? Go to videos. And there you go. Yep. 
and then go through. Yeah, so it'll just be um, Kisa's showing you there. It's the videos tab and then um, the green button in the top right corner that says upload videos. So um, as a reminder, when you go to, um, to upload in the description box, you've got the option to add um, hyperlinks to format, you know, with bold and italic if you need to. Um, you can also have it hyperlink to an email address, you know, different ways to make that description interactive. Um, you can use your tags, um, tagging each video either by the category um, or for the topic. If you have, you know, a series on advocacy or health or whatever it might be. So um, those uh, tag words are easy ways to capture the video um, in the um, search bar when you're going to look for, for different series and topics. So excellent. So. If you've created a video, um, a lot of the videos that we see um, are specific to an organization, right? It's, um, oh, hang on, I'm gonna back up real quickly. There's a question from Colleen um, asking about uploading videos. Um, I've added an image. I was thinking it would show up as the start of the video, but it did not. How is that image used? Great question, Colleen. So this is about um, the, the still or the thumbnail that's grabbed for your, um, for your video. So, um, Kisa, if you wouldn't mind, Oh, Colin, did you have more to add? No, I was just going to say, yeah, I thought it would be like the start. I uploaded our logo as that image, and I thought it would be like yeah. show up on the app as, you know, kind of the start so that as it was showing just to our people, it would kind of let them know that that's our, an important message from us, but I didn't see it today on yeah. the, what I had set. <laughs> That is a great question. Um, Kisa, if you wouldn't mind navigating to a video and we'll demonstrate where that thumbnail can be set. Um, the video automatically um, grabs a portion of the, the video to set as the thumbnail. The thumbnail is what you'll see on the app for each video. Um, it pulls it from a specific time in the video. I think it's like seven seconds and 27 seconds in, but right underneath that, in this version, that welcome to Quillo's um, image that you see, you'll see the um, change thumbnail image. If you click that, this is where um, the three that it's selected um, are the ones that it automatically pulls. So um, again, it'll pull from certain seconds throughout the video, and those are the three options that it will default to. So you automatically have three options. However, Colleen, in your case, if you want a logo or something specific, you also have that fourth window, which is upload image, where you can go and select um, your image as long as it fits you know, either a JPEG or a PNG, I think, or the file types, which could include a logo or another photo. Um, and that, that you would just upload from, you know, a, a, um, from your files. So um, sometimes, you know, you know, when you're videoing some, some, an individual and um, it might capture stills where it looks like everybody's like about to sneeze, right? You kind of capture them in that moment. Sometimes if, if the stills that they've grabbed, um, you know, if it's hard to, if it's hard to tell who the person is or if it catches somebody like, in a movement and it looks fuzzy, that's often when I'll go and grab something else. Um, either the logo, you could also do a, a photo. The image doesn't need to appear in the video for it to be a still, for it to be the, the thumbnail. So does that answer your question, Colleen? Well, I think so. I, when, uh, <laughs> uh, when I, on the page where you upload my videos, it says, you know, there's like a little block to the left, it says, upload still image um and so that's where i uh uploaded that and then like i said i didn't see it show up on our our daily on our one that we printed today or published today interesting so okay so it didn't it didn't save the image that you anticipated it would yeah i think yeah i don't think so so i might have okay. not done something yeah. right <laughs> If, if you want, um, you can either, you know, mention it now or drop us an email or a chat here with the name of the video and we can take a look at that video in particular and see um, what's what's going on if there was, um, if, yeah, if there's anything going on with that video. So. Okay, it was Coach's Corner 1 and then tomorrow's is Coach's Corner 2. So those awesome. two I had uploaded the little star logo. So. Great. Okay. Thanks. Great. Sure. Okay, I right, just make a note of that. Um, thanks for that question. We'll we'll help help you sort it out. 
So any other questions about uploading that, uh, um, uploading videos or the, um, uh, this, the thumbnail? Hey, Rebecca, I've, I've just got a question because this does get asked for me for, from customers. Um, if, if they want to search for specific videos from their organization, what is the recommendation to making sure that um, they can search their specific videos from the organization? That's a great question. So as you're in, we can go ahead and leave this, um, this video up. Um, or, or any of them, um, there are two places where you can mark, um, let me back up, the videos that appear on the app, um, the only way that they're gonna differentiate for the user is the words in the search field. So I would recommend that either in the, um, the author tag, you could mark you know, the name of your organization. So it could be you know, Colleen Villages of Ricci, or you could put it in a tag, either um, you know a, a portion of the name or the whole name as a tag. So the other thing you could do is is put the name in the description box. You know this video was created by Village of Marici, that sort of thing. So basically anywhere that you put um, uh, anywhere that you um, any text that you put in any of those fields that will show up in the search bar. That way, if your folks want to see the videos just by your organization, they can search that word and it'll show up um, or it'll just pull those videos. Great. That's, that's really helpful um, because I, I do have a number of individuals when they first get started uh, wanting to know how do I differentiate and make sure that folks can find the videos that our organization has created. So um, basically what we're saying is it pulls from the title, the author, and the description boxes as well as the tags that individuals put in. Correct. So, Correct. So you helpful. can add, add your name anywhere there. So awesome. Great. All right. So say you've uploaded an amazing video and um, it's something that you think would be great for the entire Quillow community to share. A lot of the videos might be specific to your organization, it might be about an individual or about you know, an upcoming event, that sort of thing. But sometimes the messages are universal. Um, where can you go to share a video with the Quillow community? Has anyone done that one? Okay, so on this same manage videos, um, uh, the dashboard page, you'll see along the top, you've got my videos and then the right tab or the tab on the right is um, share videos with Quillo. If you click that, you're able to select any of the videos that you've created just by choosing a video from your library. So let's say that, you know, the, um, that Smiles was a fun video. It was um, something that your organization got a kick out of and you think the whole Quillow community would enjoy it. You select that video. You can add any comments that you want. These actually go, the, the comments and the request to share go to me and a couple other members of the Quillow team. So you can say, hey, thought, thought you'd like this video or you know, whatever you want to add there. Um, and then hit submit. What will happen then is that that video, again, will go to the Quillow team. We'll check it out. If it feels like something that would be great for the Quillow community, we hit approve and it's automatically uploaded to the Quillow library more broadly. Um, if there's anything that we might need to change, we can send you a note saying, hey, that's awesome, but, you know, maybe leave out the XYZ or, you know, need a little more information, whatever it might be. So we encourage you to do that again as a way to get you know, your great ideas out to others. Um, and every now and then uh, the content team will check out the videos that you've created just to see what's going on. And we might actually reach out to you saying, hey, we love the video that you did. Do you mind if we share it? So of course we wouldn't do that without your permission, but um, just other ways to help uh, get those awesome messages out to folks. Questions about that or anything else about uploading videos? See something on the chat box. Sorry, I've lost my chat box. Just a moment. I know. 
<laughs> oh, great, Colleen. I'm glad that the um, uh, hyperlink was a, a helpful feature there. So um, that's a great way to, to connect to more information about a topic. Um, when we um, work with some of our experts who contribute videos from across the country, being able to link to their websites or email addresses, you know, it's a way to um, connect people with additional resources. So, um, and again, you can also link um, email addresses as well. So. Um, All righty. Anything else for um, uploading videos? Questions? Sorry, I, this is Colleen again. I unmuted. How um, it seems like there's like a lag time between when I upload my video, I guess, then before I can save it. Is that I do um, you know how long approximately that is? Is that like a couple yeah. minutes? Should I walk away? <laughs> but I didn't want to question. <laughs> sure Great question. So there's really there's two waiting processes when you're um, processes when you're op when you're uploading a video. The first is the uploading the video to the system itself. That's the bar that when you upload it, it turns from gray to green and it's showing, you know, 50% has been uploaded, 75%. And while that's uploading, usually it goes pretty quick unless you've got a slow internet connection. And that's a great time to be, you know, adding in the description and the tags, that sort of thing. So I would drop your video first and then fill out all the tags. I type pretty fast and I can never beat the upload, if that makes sense. You know, it, it goes pretty quick on a, a typical internet connection. Once you hit save, however, there's a second process that needs to happen. So after you, after you hit save, if you go back to your home page where the videos are, you'll notice that the video you've just uploaded is grayed out and it says processing. That's because uploading the video to the file is different from encoding. It's a behind the scenes process that the app has to do to turn that video from a video into an app thing. I'm not going to get any more technical than that, mostly because I don't know what happens, but it's an encoding process that happens behind the scenes. Um, typically, that takes four to five minutes, and then it's live on the app. So the video would, will be available within four to five minutes, depending on, again, internet connection and um, how busy the server is at that time. Sometimes it might take eight or nine minutes. If it ever takes more than 10 or 15 and you're sitting there staring at a gray box, get in touch with us because that's rare and usually doesn't happen. So, um, and to, to see how it's going, you just click the videos button to refresh that tab. So um, you can see the status. And then once, the, um, once it's live on the portal, that also means it's live on the app. So you should be able to see it right away. Good question. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, we'll shift to our daily double, which is in fact the daily focus here, and have a couple questions on scheduling our daily focus. So, as you um, ho hopefully know, the daily focus is the featured video that's set every day. Quillo has its default daily focus set that'll automatically go out to your team, but if you're setting one just for your organization, um, your question now is who's responsible or who is able to schedule a daily focus for your organization? Can a user schedule a daily focus? I see Alex shaking your head. No. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, it's, <laughs> did the lights go off on you, Alex? Yeah, I was too self. Yeah, get, get up, get up and dance. So, um, that, that's right. The users cannot um, schedule a daily focus, but content managers or um, customer administrators can set the daily focus. Typically, just for you know separation of roles, it's often the responsibility of the content manager. But both um, both of the admin positions are are able to set the daily focus. So. Um, that, of course, has its own um, tab over on the navigation bar on the left, the daily focus tab where Kisa is. Um, it demonstrates um, the, the video that you see there is the video that Quillo has set. So you can see what we've scheduled for today as well as navigate to future dates, um, see what's going on. Um, and you can see if you've selected um, 
scheduled a video of your own. Um, this yellow bar indicates that we haven't scheduled one for this organization, so you'll get the Quilla one by default. So, um, so the next question for you all is what happens if you click on send a text or email notification for the Daily Focus? It sends a text or an email to every one of the users that's active? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. So when you go to schedule a daily focus, as Keith is demonstrating here, you pick your video, whatever it might be. Let's go with, I was thinking cats too, Keith, so we're on the same page. Um, over on the right hand side, you have that option to send the notification and you can either send email, text, or both. Um, as you've seen from the Quillo messages that go out, um, we are sending both text and emails for our daily focus videos and it'll replace um, the name of the video as well as um, who's produced it. If it's a Quillo daily focus or if it's from your organization. Um, we're actually working on an update to the email right now so that um, the new design for the email will feature the name of the title as well as organization more prominently so that you'll be able to tell quickly at a glance if the um, daily focus is from your team or from Quillo. So folks will know if who it's who it's coming from. So um, yeah, once you've scheduled, um, scheduled uh, that daily focus, you hit schedule and it'll go out. So now if you were to um, decide that today, like maybe at 9, or 9 a.m., let's see, let's shift back the clock and pretend that it was 9 a.m. today on Thursday. You can schedule a daily focus for today and like for that same day and it'll override Quillows and you have until noon Eastern time um, to change the daily focus for your organization. If you change it after noon, it'll replace the daily focus and send out a new message to your team. Um, so essentially they'd get two messages within a day. But if there was ever something urgent that needed to go out or you know, just forgot to set it, um, you can change the daily focus day of. So, okay. Um, but with uh, the calendar view that you've got here, again, you can see what Quillo has scheduled. Um, there's also um, on the resources tab that we'll, we'll check out in a few minutes, a spot to see um, the daily focus that we scheduled for a month at a time. And so you can see what's coming up. Um, so you can personalize it to what, your organi what message your organization needs to hear. So anything else on um, uh, content, daily focus, videos, other uploads? Alrighty, well, I'll jot down the email addresses for Kisa and I if you do have any content specific questions. And um, otherwise, you know, continue to look forward to seeing the videos coming out from your organization and I will pass it back to Sue. Great. Thanks very much, Rebecca. Um, you know, it, it is important to just learn the little nuances and you guys ask great questions today. So again, um, check out uh, the emails that Rebecca from Rebecca and Kisa and feel free to drop them a line if there's something specific that you're running into. They're happy to, to answer questions and, and help you make sure that your content's getting uploaded. Um, so my next question then is where would you go on in the portal to actually find a video that had the most views? Where would you go to find that? Anybody know where you would go? Well, this is where you would go over to your dashboard. I don't know if you've taken the time to take a look at this yet or not, but your dashboard gives you a lot of information about what's being viewed. Um, and here's where you can find out what video has the most views. Um, so right there in the middle, Keith, if you just point to Top view, top videos, most views, um, down right in the middle. There you go. Great, right in there. This is where the most views are. That's where you again it identifies one through however many videos um, are in your library, and you can see what the views are, and also if people have liked them or not. The other question I get often get asked is, "Hey, I don't see any information on my dashboard right now." Well. Part of that is, is because at the um, upper right-hand corner there, 
you see a drop down where it says only my videos, um, Quillo and my videos, or only Quillo videos, and it defaults to only my videos. So if you have not yet uploaded anything in your library, you're only going to see the views for um, only my videos. Um, and so that would be zero. So you want to always want to kind of take a look at that and make sure that you're looking at the information that you want. So you have to click on Quillo and my videos in order to get the entire amount of views. And you can see as soon as you, as soon as Kisa clicked on that, um, the information changed. So the dashboard gives you a lot of great information and you can do it by time frame. So you clicked on Quillo and my videos and now I want to see a specific custom range. It defaults to 30 days, um, but you can also custom range it. Let's just show them how that's done, Kisa, with a custom range. So you can select custom range, click back to a specific time period, maybe you started, okay, whatever time frame, just click on April 27th through the 9th, because that was a special week that you put out a special video. You wanted to see if people watched it, hit pull, uh, apply, and then it will pull up the information. In this particular case, we had not yet had our site up, so it defaults to zero, <laughs> and that's what will happen. <laughs> that's okay. It's, it's a great way to show them how it defaults. Um, so the information goes back to when you started. So as soon as you started uh, with Quillo, it will show you the information. So as you scroll down further on the dashboard, and again, you're not going to see any information at this point, let's default back to 30 days. That way you can at least see that some of the information that's popping up. You start to see what's tracking for our demo site here. Um, you can see the days of the week, the most popular viewing times. If you hover over the different colors, it shows you when people are watching uh, videos. I usually get up at 3 a.m. in the morning, so I usually watch my video at 3 a.m. So you will see a few um, videos there being watched um, early in the morning. So maybe you have some folks who are working third shift. Um, again, uh, it will show you if they're watching videos or not. And then further down, you see the views over time. You see which um, day specifically had the most views. So maybe there was a, a daily focus that you put out. You might see a spike in your demographics in terms of what was taking place over that period of time. And then you also can see over the right hand side there the users over time. So if you add users or if you again deactivate users, it will show you. Now, in each of these um, graphics, you can actually download the information. Uh, it will go to a CSV file or an Excel sheet, and then you can manipulate the data in whatever way you would like to do it. So, um, so that's, that's how you see it. And then at the bottom, you also see the top viewers. Um, again, in our particular one, why not showing the top viewers? Mm -hmm. well, only for my video. Should show. Should. Yeah. So we we see a little glitch. So we've got to take a look at that closer and find out what's not why it's not showing us our top viewers. So what would be listed there should be all the viewers that you have on as users, and you would be able to see if they're watching videos or not. Now, I will say this, um, this is not in any way to um, reprimand people or say, hey, you have to be watching videos or anything like that. It's to give you um, information to use to say what messages are speaking to them, how can we continue to leverage um, Quillo better with the messages that are taking place for our organization. Um, so again, it's a dashboard. It's got some great information on it. Take a look at yours. Um, and see how that can help you continue to uh, put out the type of messages and continue to create the culture that you want to make it a positive experience for your users. So with that being said, any questions about the dashboard? Let's see. Would you find the video that you want to use? Okay, are we all good? All right, not hearing any other questions or anything. Okay. Hi, uh, this is Colleen, sorry. <laughs> I, I don't know if this is on the dashboard, but um, I think it's on the users though. I just remembered, I tried to print out the list so I could see who was using it or who had not logged in. 
So when I tried to print, I can only like print like that page of people and they're, yeah. and they're alphabetical by first name. And so um, I just wondered, is there a way to print the whole list at one time or is that just kind of another uh, just thing we just have to go to the second page and third page or whatever? Yeah, it, uh, yeah. on the users, um, you, there's not a download button for the users on the user okay. tab. If you wanted to um, download the who's, who's watching what, go to your dashboard, Colleen, and go to the bottom there where it um, identifies the uh, top viewers. You should oh. see all of your um, folks listed there. On our particular dashboard, it's not functioning correctly right now, but um, that could be just a, a glitch. Yeah, there it is. Okay. okay. This is this is actually where you can download it. Okay. So it will pull a spreadsheet for everybody, and I think that's the information that you would like to see. Is that correct? Right. I was just trying to see who's been using it and who hadn't, and kind of in one one snapshot. <laughs> so. Yeah. That's 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 the best place to to figure that out for the users. Okay. okay. Yeah. Great. Good question. Okay. Any other any other questions? Okay. Good. All right. Well, we kind of gone over most of the menu items now. We did not cover the consumers, and that's because right now we don't anybody that's on the call is not using the consumer piece. So I don't want us to spend a lot of time on that. But probably one of the most frequent questions that I do get is, you know, where do I go to reset a password? And um, just so that you know, as long as you have a person active on the portal, um, that person can actually go back and reset their password. So perhaps you signed them up. And, and I know that, um, you know, we say that, you know, hey, that password, you know, um, basically times out, it deactivates after, um, you know, so many days. Um, a person can still go back in and click on reset their password on the app and get that email generated to them. So they can do it themselves or um, you can actually do it as a customer administrator. And so what you would do in order to do that, um, because some people get a little frustrated, is you would go out to your login page you click on the reset your password button. So although you're not going to reset it for yourself, you're going to actually type in the person's email address and hit reset password. And, and that's what generates that email back to them so that they can then confirm their password and get logged back in. So um, two ways to do it. You can tell them to go out to their app and just hit reset their password as long as they're still active in the system it should generate that no reply email to them. So anybody have any questions about that? Because that is probably one of the most often asked questions that I get. How do I reset that? Okay. Well, that's a little bit about our deep dive. We've got about 10 minutes remaining. So a couple other just um, key things that we want to cover is um, we go back to our slides, we'll talk a little bit about, you know, other things that you have to kind of think about as a customer administrator, a key leader, a key champion in the organization around Quillo. It's really just, you know, setting up and introducing Quillo. You know, um, again, when you first started, there were emails that were generated that you could send out. Colleen, you talked about, you know, how do I, you know, continue to engage somebody? You've got to send out, you know, emails. So continue to do that. We do have tips for user engagement. So again, there's a variety of things that you can um, do. We, I'll show you the resources page. Um, we do have that specific thing out there. So again, use our ideas from there. But, um, and then we also have a, a video on our YouTube channel called What to Expect Video. So maybe you're gonna start something with uh, new hire orientation. There's a number of resources that you can use for that. But you have to think about how are we gonna set this up and introduce Quillo to the organization and continue to have user engagement. Um, so it is ongoing. Um, and so if you ever wanna just talk about ideas and suggestions specific, use the resources we have or give us a call. We're happy to sit down and talk with you about some of the ideas that are, you know, folks are using. The other thing that you've got to plan for is creating videos. Um, I know I've worked with 
Um, both of you and, and Keith and Rebecca have, have two, um, that we have video script templates out there, as well as we have a planning template. So both of those resources, again, are very valuable as you start to think about, you know, what are we gonna plan? How are we gonna make this um, happen for our organization? And then the last thing, is really continuing that ongoing engagement and leveraging leadership. You know, it's very important and critical that leaders in the organization are, model, are modeling using it. So if you've got individuals out there in your residential homes, if you've got um, you know, key leaders that are influencers, make sure that they're talking about it, that they're on, they understand what videos are out there, and they're on, constantly encouraging team members to watch and discuss them. Um, also, we, we've had some success with organizations creating some of their own little uh, groups, committees. Um, you know, they're the video producers, uh, there's certain teams that have gotten set up, so they create and share their own ideas. So um, that's another way to certainly engage um, everyone in the organization. Um, so if we go out to um, the resources page, you can see that a number of these particular resources are out there and if you have not had an opportunity to check out some of the resources we do have them um, with a content right up here at the top um, kind of indexing you know where you can find them the best way to uh, find them is say if you want to do something specific for orientation is go to the search bar there right at the bottom type in the specific tool that you want to use and and then hit the return button and it'll it'll pull that information up so because there are a number of um, resources. They aren't, uh, again, alphabetized or anything, but you know they certainly are available and we wanna make sure that people are using them. Um, so one other resource, we just wanna make sure that you're aware of, I'm gonna have Keith to talk about that, and that's our YouTube channel. Thanks, Sue. And so as Sue said, one of our resources is our YouTube channel. And a lot of the things that we've covered today, we went through a little bit quickly. And so we have created a playlist that is all about how to's. So the first one was how to sign in on the portal. Maybe you have someone three months down the road that asks, how do I do that? There, this is a video that walks you step by step on how to do that. And we've went, gone through pretty much everything we went through today, how to, edit a user's information, we didn't quite cover that, so that's something that you could go in and look at. Um, sharing a video with Quillo, managing your videos, and uh, a few more. So everybody has access to it. If you go to your YouTube and type in my Quillo, our page will show up with the bright red Q right up at the top. And we are always here to help if you want any additional videos um, out there. So always looking for more things to create. With that, I'm gonna pass it back to Sue. Okay. So make sure you leverage and utilize um, those particular tools. Just we'll pause here real quick. Anybody have any questions about the resources? Okay, great. Well, really the most important resource is the team. Um, you know, one of the things that we have learned is that um, Quilla works when there is a committed team that has identified, hey, we're gonna set our goals. We're gonna work together. We're not gonna do this as, you know, one lone person because um, it takes creativity. It takes, again, um, people committed to leveraging the tool. So make sure that as you continue to work with Quillo, that you recognize and acknowledge all the team members who are working with you, because without a team, we do know that this is really, again, um, too overwhelming for one person to really do it by themselves. So make sure that you're always acknowledging um, your team members in order to be effective. So that's, uh, again, very important. Um, one of the best practices that one of the organizations did is that they made sure that they had a team of um, representatives from their DSP group to be part of the spokes, 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 um, spokespersons to help identify, you know, what type of videos do we want to create, what do we want to do with this, 
Um, and that seemed to work really effectively. So if you've got some folks who are out there as direct support professionals who are interested in continuing to grow and develop their skills, that's a great way to incorporate them and leverage their information um, to make sure that it's successful for you. So very important. Um, you know, we've had a lot of fun doing these um, Quillo Nation calls. And right now we're doing two a month. And we do want to get your feedback. Um, and you can do that right now on the chat feature or after the call. Just send us a quick email. Let us know, is this a good time and date to, to do the Quillo Nation calls? We do them on the first and third Thursdays of every month. Um, the first week on that first Thursday is what we call this back to basics like we did today. We do a deep dive into some element of Quillo. There's three basic sessions um, that we keep repeating. Um, let us know if, this is, if these are valuable to you. And is the time of day working? We do them from 2 to 3 p.m. Um, and part of that is because we do have some you know, uh, customers who are out on California time and West Coast. So we do try to incorporate that and allow them the opportunity to, to, to be a part of this. But let us know if that works for you or send us an email directly. Again, uh, Rebecca's put out on the chat feature, send it directly to me. Let us know what value you're getting out of the Quillo Nation calls. We would appreciate it. So as we wrap up today, um, we just wanna let you know that our next call is scheduled for June uh, 20th from 2 to 3 p.m. And we do have a special guest with us, Jason Freeman. As a matter of fact, you might've seen some of his videos um, out on the um, app itself because Jason is one of our um, content producers and we love him because he's been a former DSP um, and um, again has um, a, a great message because he talks about his imperfect self um, and his topic is going to be how your imperfect best can enhance workplace joy, um, perseverance, and productivity. So Jason Freeman again is um, going to be with us on June 20th from 2 to 3 p.m. Uh, we'll, we will be having more information go out. Um, feel free to invite um, your other individuals in the organization that are part of your Quillo Champion team. Um, you know, this again is one of those particular sessions where um, I think Jason will speak to a number of individuals so it doesn't necessarily have to be limited to just the customer administrators or the content managers. So feel free, if there's some individuals you want to be leaders with Quillo, this might be a great session for them to hear. Great. Okay, so we're about two o'clock hour, um, three o'clock hour, I guess. Boy, this hour went fast. Any last questions or comments from anybody before we wrap up? Um, this is Colleen. I just, do you have any good resources on um, how to do like the video editing when we're making our own videos? You know, we're not very skilled photographers or videographers yet. Um, just like how to edit, you know, um, if you look at our video we edited today, like you can hear me say go <laughs> to Christy okay. before she starts talking. And, and so just, um, you know, just knowing, learning how to manage the videos before we upload them. <laughs> if you have any web resources or anything like that that we could watch. That'd be great. Absolutely, Colleen. And I can send you a, a follow-up email. There's a couple couple ways to go about it. Um, um, our next, next or in two months, Back to Basics actually talks about those editing tools. A lot of them are free on your computer. So um, we could either set up a session to go through that together. Um, you could watch a recording from a previous Back to Basics to look at how to go through those tools. Um, or I can send you some specific links to, to dig through. So um, the, the editing tools are relatively user friendly if all you want to do is snip off the ends a little bit and you know spice it up a little bit um, without you know taking hours of your time so absolutely there are some resources um, there's a list on the resources tab or the, the website for some of those tools um, or I'll send you a follow-up note here in a minute um, we can connect and uh, um, figure out the best way to get you those tools okay. and I, I forgot about going to resources too so that's a great reminder so I'll, great. I'll go there and look as well <laughs> sounds good yeah. thanks the other thing the other thing I would say too is that um, 
you know, and I think both Keith and Rebecca would agree is that it just takes a little bit of practice. If this is not something that you're used to doing every day, um, it just takes a little bit of practice. Like you were saying, you know, I just, I said the word stop or um, you just, it's, it's, it's that all, practice, practice, practice. Um, so, um, but the resources I do believe will help you. Um, and again, if you want to set up something individually, Rebecca will be happy to talk through that with you. Um, matter of fact, we're close enough that if you want Keith to come out and work with you a little bit too, we'll be happy to do that. Okay. Great. Well, again, I want to thank everybody. Um, we will hopefully see you on June 20th. You guys all have a great day. Thanks for attending today. Take care. Thank Bye you. Now. Bye. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye.